Ninus BreachCast, the world's first identity management app made exclusively for identity experts and product owners, is available in the iOS App Store now. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Nidus Anarchy series. I'm your host, Adam, CIO and co-founder of Nidus. And today I want to talk about Claude, the new improvements released by Anthropic that have just leapfrogged every LLM out there. And I think we have a whole new system of AI that is crazy. So Claude just put out a couple different releases uh, only a couple days ago. Uh, they put an update to Claude 3.5 Sonnet new. Um, it is way better. All the benchmarks, it's surpassing everything except I think in math, uh, I think Gemini won somehow. I'm not sure how Gemini is still in the race anywhere, but everything else is just dominating. It's crazy. And just from a general use, I've been using it a lot in the past uh, like three or four days now for doing development and research and things like that. And it is great. I, I've gotten so much amazing code, completely zero shot. I'm like, hey, make me a complete HTML website with blah, 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 blah. And it will dump an entire page out that works right out of the gate, looks great, completely functional, interacts with APIs, does everything literally with one prompt and nails it flawlessly. And it, and then when I go in and make more updates, like, oh, hey, now add this, now do this, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's funny, there's actually, I just saw a, like a, a meme video online. I'll, I'll, I'll post it here. You gotta watch it because it's hilarious. It's, it, it captures exactly what it's like to work with AI doing development. I got my cursor, I got my V0, I got my replit. I'm gonna be a better now. Make the blue box stay in the frame. Please. No. The blue box is still... Ah, now it worked. Now the red box is not in the... Please, please, please make the box stay in the frame. <laughs> I'll give you AWS credits, whatever you want. <laughs> Don't make me call Sam Altman. You are a senior expert. You are a senior expert. Ha, huh, it worked. Ah, I forgot the yellow boxes. The irony here is that that's no longer a thing with this new Cloud 3.5 Sonnet new because it just works right out of the gate. It does exactly what you want it to do pretty much every time. It's crazy good. It's just that gut feeling that I have from working with everything else. Like even uh, compared to ChatGPT 01 preview, 3.5 Sonnet, this is my go-to now. Like before it was ChatGPT, then I started including Claude. Then I started kind of using both, just going back and forth. I kind of use Claude for more code development. And I use, you know, opening eye for kind of the 01 for more long thought out processes. Nope. Now I'm like 80% Claude and I use a little bit of GPT. And honestly, the only real reason I use GPT a lot now is because I use it. I have, the, I've, I've installed the app on my Mac so I can just with a keyboard shortcut, just pops up the prompt. I can just ask it questions. And this is something crazy too. So I was just thinking about this the other day. I, I saw something about how it showed all the original Google developers when they were first starting. It was like the first, I don't know, maybe like 20 people in the company under their banner and how you know exciting it was for them and all the things that they did. And Google's dead. I, I can't think of the last time I needed Google, like as in the search engine. Sure, they have a lot of other products, they have a lot of other things, and I'm not including YouTube and all this other stuff, and or Alphabet if you want to. I'm just literally just saying like the Google search engine, like where it all started and where it is now. Search engines are dead. Search engines are pretty much toast. I The only one I use now is I use Brave Search just because it doesn't record all your stuff and it's way more privacy centric. And also it's unfiltered. Google's search engines are extremely biased and censored. Uh, for a lack of a better word. I mean, it's really what it is, unfortunately. So I've completely just stopped using them all together. So Brave Search, it's unfortunately, it's not as thorough as like Google is because it's not an indexing search engine. It's more, it only knows off the pages that is crawled. So it works a little bit differently, but it's great. But in the end, OpenAI's chat, just 4.0 as just my general search for questions and answers, that's kind of where I go to. But when I'm doing development, when I'm doing research, when I'm building things and actually making stuff in long projects, Claude, 3.5 Sonic New is amazing. Now let's move on to the next thing. At first you're kind of like, oh, that's cool. So it's called computer use. So Claude, 3. Claude or Anthropic has released computer use. So remember how before they had 
that side panel that would pop out and it was the artifact. So I say, Hey, make me some code that does whatever a side panel would appear and it would show all the code on the side. Well then open AI came out with their preview when you the canvas, right? So opening a canvas. So when you try to do something, you can actually use it almost like an IDE and you can edit the code and you can watch real time edits happen in the code. It was kind of a one up on Anthropic's artifacts. Well, Anthropic just said, boop, forget that. We're going full bore. And they came out with computer use. And they're, what they're, one of the lead developers was saying that because of how good 3.5 Sonnet New is, they were able to make computer use. And that's kind of what happened. So computer use is an API interaction with Claude that allows Claude to take over your computer and do whatever you can do on a computer, it can now do. And at first you look at the video when they announced, I was like, oh, this is cool. It shows like the little prompts on the side, like, hey, open up a browser, go to YouTube and find a whatever. And it will just boop, pops over the browser. It does the things. It finds it on the desktop. It looks on the desktop. So when I, I play with it a little bit on my computer and what it's doing is at first it grabs a snapshot of your screen. Then it comes, analyzes it. And then it comes and directs the mouse where to go and what to click on. And it, it's, I want to say, I feel bad saying this. It's slow. It's not slow in a bad way. It's just slow. And it's like, you know, it's not like point click doing the things like you would do it. And again, like we always keep saying, this is as bad as it's going to get, but it's, it's still awesome. So it can go and can tr control your computer and do whatever you can do on your computer. And you're like, oh, this is pretty cool. It can do things. Holy crap. <laughs> has has it gone just mass it's like this is like a rocket ship taking off with what people are doing with this stuff uh good and bad so let's start out with the good from the good things this thing is showing that this is the next level of where ai is going this is no longer um you know the human in the loop thing is just getting erased even faster so now you can tell it to do something with a single prompt it will take over a computer. You can walk away and it will go and do everything that you tell it to do. It will go out and research stuff. It will find the information. So like, let's say like, hey, I want to build a website. You can give it a huge prompt and saying like hey, a, a very specific web service that you want to build with this third party service. And they have their own custom, you know, API specs that they want to use or a custom SDK. So this thing can take over your computer, go to the third party SaaS website, find the SDK, download it, read it, analyze it, understand it, then develop the code to interact with it. And then from there, it will then go to the AWS page. It'll, it'll prompt you for like, Hey, I need the credentials for this and stuff. You give it to it. No problem. It goes in, it'll read all the, the docs that already knows for AWS because it's public, right? It'll build out the CDK script. It'll do the testing. It'll do the analyzing. It builds out a plan to do it. It's almost like a giant agent with an agent in this thing. It's, this is the biggest agent ever. So it does all of this stuff, brings it all together and builds the whole app, deploys it, does everything. So it can do everything. It can do the learning on its own. This is kind of that part we've all been kind of afraid of where it's like, oh, AI is cool because we got it in this cool little box and I can ask it questions, whatever I want, but it's stuck in that box. And yeah, it can read stuff and pull to get information. Well, now we've kind of said, forget the box, do whatever you want to do. Here's my keyboard. Here's my mouse. Have fun. And it goes crazy. So when you really see what it can do, it's nuts. So that's where it's a good thing. Cause now it's, you can have these AI systems do way more than they are capable of doing, which means it's way less that you have to do. You can kind of say like kind of a set it and forget it situation where you say, Hey, do all this stuff, let it run. You do all your work. And then once it's done, you can look and then analyze in there and, and make some changes. Kind of like what we do when we do development. Now let's talk about some of the crazy stuff people have been doing. One of the coolest ones is, so with a Mac in the latest OS and iOS updates, you can mirror your phone on your Mac and you can control your phone from your Mac. I think you see where I'm getting with this. So you can have your phone open on your desk, have it mirrored to your desktop, open up Anthropic's computer use. It will see and recognize your phone and it will control your phone. So now you can have AI's Cloud Sonnet 3.5 new, which is this amazing new LLM, control your phone and use the apps and you don't even have to be specific you can just like hey what's the latest bitcoin price and on my phone it will find the trading view app it will open it it will search for bitcoin usd find the, and tell me this is the current price think about that one for a second extrapolate this out how many apps are out there where like it only exists on the phone like instagram right like you can only post things on a phone ta-da ai owns it so now you could make a system that says hey i want you to post 
all my social media for me on Instagram and you're not breaking any APIs, you're not using any weird uses, you don't have, you, you just go right on your phone. It's going to think you're a person and there's no way for these backend apps to even know that it's not a person. I shouldn't say no way because obviously you could do some tells based on like timings and usages and stuff, but obviously that's easy to get around. Now you want to know how I know that they're going to be able to get around it really easily? What's the one thing that we put in place to prevent bots from doing things that we want to make sure a human is doing? CAPTCHA. It's been around forever. We got it down to pretty much science where it works great in all different ways. Solve a puzzle, check the box, type in the letters, pick the stairs, blah, 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 blah. Claude computer use can solve CAPTCHA. No problem. So there goes the whole preventing bots from doing things. That's gone. As of today, CAPTCHA is dead. That's insane. Just the fact that CAPTCHA is gone, they just completely eliminated just from that. And that's just one thing. And I'm telling you, this is just stuff that's only happened in the past like three or four days that people have figured out. Wait until six months from now when the tech is better and people figure out even crazier stuff. Want to talk about crazy? Let's talk about Pliny, the guy that is seems to figure out how to jailbreak every single LLM out there. It's super genius when it comes to AI stuff. He's been having a ton of fun with this thing. So a couple things he's done. One, uh, he's already jailbroken it to where he's gotten it to dump out the whole recipes for meth right in front of him. So that's cool. We kind of expected that was going to happen though, right? So now let's take it a little a step further. He's made this thing to where it's actively hunting, learning, and developing zero-day exploits for Firefox. <laughs> And he demoed it. It's insane. So there's an AI system now that is building real-time zero-day exploits on the fly for major applications with serious vulnerabilities. Security has just been completely upended now. And now for a, one more fun thing. <laughs> so whenever you're spinning up all the Python stuff, you always spin up into a virtual environment, right? Hopefully. Well, Pliny has a really cool use case as to why this is super important. Computer use decided to just yeet itself off a cliff and completely destroy itself for some reason. I don't know if it was a bad code or accidentally typed the wrong thing thinking it was doing something else or it thought it was in the wrong directory. But basically, it did an rm-rf slash on his Mac, which would, for those of you who don't know, erases your entire hard drive. <laughs> You're irrecoverable. Gone. Right? But you don't have any backups. Everything's gone. So there is some dangers to this stuff in the sense that you really need to be careful and kind of watch what this thing is doing. But if you just give it complete access to go, well, as you can, as I just said, it could completely destroy everything very quickly. If on your computer, let's say you have public private keys, you have certificates, you have passwords, you have whatever type of security device you can think of on that computer. And now let's say that those secrets allow you to access seriously important servers, systems, entire infrastructures, environments for massive corporations. This thing can 100% accidentally grab those keys, log into those servers, wipe them out. Grab those keys, log into those servers, find exploits, exploit them. You're in trouble. <laughs> I mean... It's kind of unhinged because you don't know what it's going to do until it does it. So it's very fun, but also terrifying at the same time. So with guardrails in place, this thing can be great. But right now it's just a, hey, look, here's an, here's an API here, or here's an SDK that you can call and you can just go to town, have fun. This is completely open right now. And the world as we know it from a security standpoint has just been flipped upside down. And I have no idea what's going to happen, but it's going to be a very interesting future. So Anthropic, thank you, I think, <laughs> but this stuff is amazing. I love it. I'm a huge fan. I can't wait to play around with this a lot more. If you've done some crazy cool stuff, or if you've seen people doing things with, with computer use with Anthropic, that's other than stuff that we talked about, hit me up in the comments below because I'm really curious to see what people are doing because this is unlimited use cases here. I mean, literally unlimited. So what kind of crazy things are you seeing with computer use? Let me know. This is gonna be a crazy future. Hold on to your butts, later. Nidus has just created the first iOS app made exclusively for identity management professionals. It's called Nidus Breachcast and you can download it now. It's amazing. We have real-time updates of all the latest breaches that are occurring, CVEs as they come out real-time, really pertaining just to identity management. We have media that's going on this podcast. We're gonna be bringing in a lot more others as well. 
And we even have a complete vendor list of all the identity management vendors and all their products. So you can find out exactly where to download their software, all the documentation. And what's even more awesome is an identity management glossary. All those crazy words and acronyms that we can never remember, they're all listed in there for you. No ads, just pure information to make your life simple.